The volatile manifestation of one's reality and purpose. One's reality is manufactured based on accumulated those that exist within the mind. These thoughts were formed as an experience of one's past experience. Exists within the mind are a mixture of true, false, and combined thought of some truth and false. For one who has a mind with mostly true thoughts, is light, love, and close to God. For one who has a mind with mostly false thoughts lives in darkness, an illusion, and is close to hell. If exist within you the knowledge of anything, object, and that knowledge is known to you to be the truth, that something exists without a doubt in your one's reality. If exist within you the knowledge of something, object, anything, and that knowledge is a belief or you have faith that knowledge is the truth, that something exists in your reality as an illusion. An object, something, exists in your reality because it became manifest in one or two ways. 1. Manifestations of object, something, created by truth which you may refer to as God, good, holy, love, or light. 2. Manifestations of object, something, created by false which you may refer to as Satan, evil, unholy, hate, or darkness. Your manifestations of objects by truth are all-powerful. Your manifestations of objects by false are weak. True knowledge can never be destroyed by false knowledge, because the truth is the truth. False knowledge is always destroyed by the truth and becomes existent in its place. Truth may only be destroyed if its existence becomes unknown. The kingdom of heaven is one's reality based on manifestations of the known truth. The kingdom of hell is one's reality where manifestations of the truth have been lost. Since your reality is here is the world we live, it means the knowledge you have manifested OIR collected within you is of both and you exist in a place stuck between both heaven and hell, but this world is temporary and you will eventually exist in one or the other. If one constantly seeks truth, knows the truth, never loses knowledge of the truth, one's reality will be that of heaven. If fails to seek truth, ignorant of truth, believe or just has faith rather than knows, one's reality will be that of hell. The purpose of your existence is a reoccurring life and death experience to find and be truth. When and if you obtain the truth you will become the truth. A pure existence of life, love, and light. That is when you are saved and returned to God. Failure to do so before the knowledge of truth is completely lost, will leave you in eternal hell, in darkness without light to lead your path home. The path you pick is your choice to choose. This is your free will. V14-21 One Jesus was aware of doubts within the minds of the apostles, but the doubts did not concern him. Two Jesus' vision of the face of Christ was nearing its fullness, and his heart was filled with love and peace at all times. Three yet, he knew the apostles' doubts concerned them. Four for in their minds, they had given up much to follow Jesus. Five they sought fullness in faith that their choice had been the right one, so their doubts concerned them gravely. 6 One night, Jesus spoke to the apostles about their doubt. 7 He explained that like the Pharisees who had questioned him, doubt could blind them to the reflection of light within their minds. 8 But he also explained that their doubts did not take the light away. 9 The light is always within you, Jesus explained. 10 And like yeast that has been placed in flour, this light expands within your mind, even now, as you doubt. 11 Those the Father has called to do his service will follow their call. 12 For they can do nothing else. 13 The desire is strong within them or they would not have heard the call. 14 Let your doubts not concern you. 15 They are merely fear, and fear is nothing, so it cannot hold you back. 16 Look at your doubts and lay them aside, that you may continue the work your Father has called you to do. V 22-26 One everywhere Jesus went, he helped people to see differently. Two as he taught with joy, touching many people, the apostles began to see differently too. Three more and more, the apostles began to seek private counsel with Jesus to discuss their fears and doubts. Four Jesus responded lovingly with every discussion that was brought to him. Five never did the apostles feel judged. Six increasingly, they became aware of a new sight, a way of seeing the world that they hadn't known before. 7 As this new sight filled their hearts with joy, they became increasingly committed to doing the work of their Father. 91 v 27 to 30. 1 And so the time came that Jesus again talked to the apostles about their doubts. 2 Who do people say I am? Jesus asked. 3 The apostles answered with rumors they had heard while teaching. 4 There were many perspectives among the people, but no one seemed to know the truth. 5 And who do you say I am? asked Jesus. 6 A great teacher, answered Thomas quickly. 7 A master in the service of our Lord. 8 Peter, Jesus asked. 9 And you. 10 Who do you say I am, Peter? 11 Peter was quiet for a moment before answering, reflecting upon the answer that had been given him in his mind. 12 
You are me, Master, dot the Son of God the Christ. 13. You are one who has learned this awareness, and so you share it with us, as Thomas has pointed out. 14. Jesus smiled. 15. This you did not learn from men, Peter. 16. This you learned from the voice of our Lord within. 17. In trusting this voice, you have shared a great truth. 18. Jesus spoke to all of the apostles. 19. The voice within will lead you clearly when you give it your trust and put your doubts aside. 20. It will reveal truths to you that you have not imagined, and so you will know they are true. 21. And even as this voice speaks, you may hear another voice that brings doubt and fear. 22. Place that voice aside, for the voice of fear will cloud the vision of light and hide that light from you. 23. But when the voice of fear is let go, the light will shine to place heaven within your sight. 24. I truly say to you, watch the thoughts within your mind. 25. Choose what you will believe carefully. 26. For what you believe, you believe in heaven, although it may hide heaven from your sight. 27. The apostles understood Jesus' words, although they did not all believe them. V. 31-38. 1. Then Jesus talked to the apostles about transcendence. 2. He talked of transcending fear and doubt, and he talked to them about. Hello and welcome to this David Icke Dot Connector video cast. Well, I find it interesting that um, over the uh, years of doing these video casts every week, the ones that uncover the problem, which needs uncovering, absolutely should be circulating. That's why I do it all the time. But those get far bigger interest than those that look at what we can do about it. How we can make the world a different reality to the one we are experiencing and would rather it change. Which is a kind of a strange thing because people are asking for solutions all the time. Okay, yeah, okay, so I can see what's going on. So, so what's the solution? What do we do about it? And when you talk about what can be done about it, the interest is a lot less. And unless we do address that, then all we're going to be doing is exposing more and more of the problem and basically getting nowhere. The problem has to be exposed. People have to know how the world is manipulated and to what end, absolutely. But we also surely need to look at what we can do to turn that around. I think one of the one of the the points of resistance for many people is that when I talk about solutions, I'm not talking about protest and getting someone to take minutes and starting an organization. Nothing wrong with that, but, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about something much deeper and much more profound. And it could sound to people who are, who are not into this whole arena that I'm talking about today, that it's all airy fairy, esoteric wind. What can I put it? Um, it ain't. It's reversing how we got here. And you can find solutions for problems. And of course, we are drowning in solutions that lead to more problems. It's what politics is there for. Or, surely, we can do the sensible thing which is to remove the cause of the problem and then the problem by definition must go away and um, when you break it down it's so simple it's the difference between being driven by the heart and being driven by the head and although it is that simple 
it's not easy for most people, quite understandably, to move from a head-driven perception to a heart-driven perception because for the very reason of stopping us doing that, human society has been structured to drive us into the head and to ignore the heart. So if you look at, for instance, what we bravely call the education system, it's all about feeding the head, feeding the intellect. What I would call, and I think it's pretty obvious to anyone who looks at it, programming the head, programming perceptions of reality across the great spectrum of human society. Because once you've got someone's perception and you've got it in a bubble or in a in a box, then you're controlling their behavior for the rest of their life. Because perceptions of reality become behavior as a result of those perceptions. And another resistance for many people to looking at this absolutely foundation answer to everything is that they still perceive the body to be solid and physical and everything to be apart from everything else. It's not. We are consciousness. We are points of attention within an infinite state of consciousness. And this vehicle, which is not solid as we experience it, I'll grant you that, so do I, but holographic, illusory solid, illusory physical, this is the vehicle through which we experience this reality, which is just a band of frequency with infinity existing beyond its very narrow walls or firewalls of human perception. If you think that the electromagnetic spectrum is 0.005% of what exists in this universe, some say it's a bit more, but it, not much, it's a tiny, tiny fraction, the electromagnetic spectrum, of this universe. And visible light, which is the only band of frequency that we can see, it's what we call the world, is a smear of that 0.005%. So we don't live in a world, we live in a band of frequency, which appears to be a world. And this body is the vehicle for our awareness to experience this reality. Because um, if my awareness in its state of frequency wanted to directly interact with this reality, it couldn't. I couldn't, for instance, pick up that pair of glasses because my consciousness that which is experiencing through the body is in a completely different frequency to those glasses therefore just as two radio stations pass each other in the same space without interfering with each other unless they're close on the dial so my consciousness cannot directly pick up the glasses so I couldn't interact from that level of no form consciousness with this world. So we take on an outer shell, if you like, which is not really a shell, it's, an, it's a field of information, waveform field of information, uh, a bit like Wi-Fi, if you like. And um, we therefore have an outer vehicle that is resonating, vibrating, is within the frequency band that we want to experience and therefore we can interact with it. I can pick up those glasses. And then at what we call death, 
the awareness, the true self, the infinite self, the eternal self, <clears throat> which has been experiencing through the vehicle. When the vehicle dies, not the consciousness, the vehicle reaches the end of its cycle sooner or later. Consciousness withdraws from the vehicle and continues its eternal exploration of um, forever. Forever. So, the question then comes, where are we going to get our information from to get a fix on the world, the reality that we're experiencing? Well, we can, if we close down our awareness and allow basically our reality to be dictated only by the five senses. Can I touch it, see it, taste it, hear it, etc.? Then it must exist. And if I can't, it doesn't exist. Possible. What well, is actually? If we come from that direction, then where is that information going to come from? To the five senses and to the brain interacting with the five senses, it's going to come from this reality. It's going to come from within the smear of 0.005%. And who's going to control that information? Who does control it currently? The mainstream media, Silicon Valley, education, mainstream medicine, mainstream science. They control that information from which we get our perceptions, from which comes our behavior. And the brain is not where our consciousness comes from. It is a extraordinary computer system, in effect, which processes information. And if that information comes from these, um, this world sources of information alone, the five sense sources of information that we see all the time, then it's going to process that information into a perception of reality. But if we expand and open our minds from just five sense reality and we allow it to expand beyond this smear of 0.005%, indeed beyond the 0.005%, then we can start to access information, inspiration, intuition, knowing that is not of the five sense world. And thus, suddenly, you start to have a radar First of all, you have a radar on which to process an, an antenna to process the information that you're receiving from the five senses. And I can tell you, having been through this whole process um, about 30 years ago and ongoing, it's always ongoing, that once you burst through that five sense perception of everything, which is what I did in 1990, 1991. And that's what happened to me on the, the Wogan show in, was it 1991 when I was talking and people were saying he's crazy and I couldn't walk down any street without being laughed at and ridiculed. What was happening to me at that time was I was bursting through this five sense reality bubble. And thus I was starting to perceive things and receive information from outside the bubble, which was, was like a tidal wave to start with. And it was very difficult to process. And just like a computer freezes, when you give it too much information at once, I froze for about three months in 1991. But then when the computer unfroze, I was seeing the world with my feet on the ground again, 
but in a totally different way. Because I suddenly had a radar. I had another point of observation through which I could perceive this reality. And suddenly what appeared to be random dots suddenly made patterns. I could see how they connected, could see where it was going. You could see um, the truth in the white bits between the words that are given to us to tell us what to think. And that <clears throat> process of transformation was again quite straightforward in what happened, but not so straightforward in trying to cope with it. And that's, I moved out of my head only into here, the heart. And the human energetic field, the waveform field, which the body is an expression of, has vortex points in it, if anyone's new to this stuff. In the East, they call them chakras or wheels of light, they're vortex points. And the one that is the center vortex, the balance vortex, is in the center of the chest within the human energetic field. And it's known in esoterics as the heart. Not the physical heart or the holographic heart, but the energetic heart. And this connects us into levels of reality, levels of perception, levels of knowledge, awareness, wisdom, understanding, intuition, that this would never do. Because it's only processing information that it receives. And if all it's receiving is information from the five sense world of mainstream everything, then that is what most people will perceive the world to be what they've been told because that's what their brain is processing and becoming their perception of reality. But when you move from here to here, this is connecting you with levels of awareness, levels of consciousness that are far beyond this, by comparison, Stone Age-like reality we call the world of the five senses. And you can access information, awareness, wisdom, understanding, intuitive knowing that you won't only through this. What the system does, it worships the intellect, doesn't it? You pass the exams. Oh, he's got a great intellect. She's got a great intellect. Well, all right. But has she got a great consciousness? Has he got a great consciousness? Because they aren't the same in the way that I'm describing it today. And so when you, you look at the difference between the two, this, if we allow it to open, is accessing levels of awareness that know. This is not accessing those levels of awareness and thus it has to think and try to work it out because it doesn't know. Look at the body language that most people use. When they say, I'm thinking, where does, their, where does their hand go? I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Where do their hands go when they say, I know, I just know, it comes here. I know, I just know. And this is body language indicating where this knowing is coming from. And so in the early 1990s, I started the journey which is a completely and utterly life-changing journey from here to here. And everything changed. And of course, when you're, when you're coming from here and you're, you're having this be your guide, you are going to perceive things and say things and do things that people here, not that they're inferior people they're just perceiving reality in a different way 
People here are going to look at those people and go, you're bloody mad, mate. You're having a midlife crisis. When actually all you've done is move to another point of awareness, inspiration, knowing. And this conspiracy that I have been exposing all these years, which is becoming more and more obvious, that's why more and more people are opening their minds to it. One of its foundation methods to control the human race has been to close the heart. And when you close the heart, then perception moves completely to the head. And what they then do and have done is control the information the brain processes by controlling information. That's why all this censorship's going on now. They want to censor anything that gives the, the brain alternative information to process and thus come to a different perception, which is bad for the conspiracy. But when you go the other way and you open your heart and you move this point of perception here, then you start to see both the world and yourself in a different way. And the world that we have created is a world created by the head, by the mind. And unless we move out of that, we'll go on just repeating and repeating and repeating what's happened before. If you try to find head solutions for head created problems, that's when you are saying, I've got a solution which leads to more problems. Einstein said something like, um, you cannot solve problems with the same level of consciousness that created them. And that's what we're doing. Head politicians of one party say we're going to solve the problems of the head politicians of another party what happens more problems the heart is the center of everything in terms of the human experience and that's why it's been shut down there was uh, or is um, in california an organization that's been around for quite some time now called the institute of heart math which carries out research into the power of the heart, the influence of the heart and the nature of the heart. And I'm talking about the energetic heart. Um, and this is some of, the, um, some of the things that the Institute of Heart Math Research has discovered. Heart rhythms affect the brain's ability to process information. Because when people th think about coming to perception, they think about the brain. I'm thinking, but this is the real PowerPoint for perception. And what's happening here is affecting this. The heart field, the electromagnetic field generated by this vortex, is the most powerful in the body. The heart has 40,000 sensory neurons, like the brain, neurons. And this is what they call, in this research, the heart-brain syndrome. Because the heart and the brain should be working together. Information, knowing, uh, and... Uh, feelings of how things are come from the heart and then need to be processed by the brain into 
action into putting the whole picture together. But when this is shut down, only this is in the process. Do you know, um, they found that when the brain and the heart and the central nervous system are in what they call coherence, in other words, they're in balance and harmony, the person goes on to a higher level of consciousness. And when there is an incoherent imbalance in the connection between the heart, the brain and the central nervous system, the person falls into a lower level of consciousness. And this is how the conspiracy works. It doesn't want the brain and the heart in harmony. It wants them in disharmony because that brings the human consciousness into a lower level of awareness Gotcha. Part five of our series, The Secret Behind Our Music, Food and Health. You know, it's, it's a theory and it's a concept as I stated in many of these uh, videos. I don't want to always talk about the negative or the scary parts of uh, observations, but also solutions. And this part five is, what can we do about it? Well, I'll proceed. I've got 10 points. There's more, but these are the major 10 points of what we can do to try to minimize the effects of our harmful music and food. That we're all exposed to. So we'll start off with number one. A lot of this is common sense, so uh, you know all this, but it's good to kind of review this. One, eat as much organic food as possible. So your fruits, vegetables, if it's meats, uh, you want grass-fed meat, you want to stay away from the CAFOs, the production food, you know, where they, they cage in uh, mass production of the chickens, turkeys, hogs, things of that nature. What they're feeding uh, those animals is uh, not the best. Uh, they're in a stressful environment and those hormones are released into the meat. Um, if you can, you've heard of free range. Free range is where chickens, hogs, cattle, turkeys are in their natural environment, living their life as they should, and then their uh, process they're slaughtered uh, to eat, that's better than the commercial CAFOs. Um, second, drink lots of water, filter water and distilled water. Intermediate water fasting uh, there has been very uh, successful. There's a lot of videos dedicated just on this topic alone that you can look up yourself. Um, water, a, a lot of us don't drink enough water, especially the filtered distilled water. Uh, the more you drink, the better it is uh, for your body's functions and hydration. And typically in the Western worlds, or let's say in the United States, we do tend to eat too much, uh, too much chloral, caloric intake. So eating less one to two meals a day with a lot of uh, drinking of water will help the body. A lot of methods for body cleansing, point three. There's foot ionics, colonics, juicing, uh, reducing the intake of refined sugars. You know, that the, the white packet sugar, um, high fructose corn syrup which is in a lot of our food. It's a very addictive. But what's interesting is you go on the internet and the medical community that we're subject to, allopathy medicine, which is the primary medical treatment for the Western world, they'll poo-poo foot ionics, uh, colonics, and... Um, I tend to find that the, the, the more 
negative videos or information from the medical community, uh, you're probably better off doing just the opposite. But that's not medical advice, that's just an observation. I've got a disclaimer at the very bottom um, about me not being a doctor and this not being medical advice. I'll repeat that. So you want to be able to get the toxins out of your body, and these are natural ways to uh, reduce the toxins. You want to help your lymphatic system and your kidneys and livers. Uh, you want to help your body to get the toxins out. Point number four, regular exercise. Be outside and get sunlight exposure, natural light as much as possible. If you think about it, uh, a lot of people spend a large majority of their time indoors if they're working inside in an office, school, medical center. Uh, might be home quite a bit while off work. How many hours or minutes do we really get exposure to sunlight throughout the year? It's even less in the winter, winter time. Well, we, we need sunlight. There's program data in the electromagnetic wavelengths of the sun. Our skin is the biggest organ in our body, so exposure to the sunlight is important uh, with our DNA receptors on our skin, besides uh, the conversion of vitamin D. And watching a sunrise or sunset, both, if you're not a morning person, then sunset or vice versa, you go to bed early but you're up, one or both of a sunrise or sunset is very important if you can capture one per day. There's a lot of a, a emotional, spiritual value to observing a sunrise or sunset as well. Number five, notice I have it in red. This has always been my pet peeve. Uh, no one listens to me, but that's okay. Uh, I'm used to it. Got to get rid of TV. Television, see, someone is telling you a vision, their vision. And you have TV programming, television programming, and that's what they're doing. They're programming you. Um, you want to reduce your electronic media viewing or video gaming as much as possible. There's a lot of uh, subconscious coding that goes in with, with media. And reducing your exposure to that is crucial. Number six. Listen to music in 432 hertz, not 440. There's apps, for example, that can convert today's 440 music into 432. That would be a good start. Or you could go old school. When I talk about vinyl, old school LPs with the, you know, the old turntable. You ever heard of the song, Put the Needle on the Record? Well, that's referring to the old vinyl records. Um, a lot of classical music, for example, if you find the older classical music that's in uh, LPs with the turntable that's recorded, it's in 432. What's interesting, <clears throat> see, how do I say this? There's, I don't know what we're, I hate keep using the word the elite, but the, the, uh, the wealthier upper society, uh, social stratus. One thing that I noticed years ago when I was, would be uh, in contact with them in their home or in their office, uh, perhaps uh, work-related, every single one always listened to classical music on the old turntable LP, and it was in 432. So I think they know the importance of music and the choice of music. I never ever would hear them listen to 440 music with modern day music or rock and roll, um, rhythm and blues, soul. And uh, I didn't realize that when I was younger, but now that I'm, uh, I'm older, I'm starting to make that connection. What do the elite and the upper societies listen to? Well, they listen to classical music in 432. Point seven, prayer and meditation to source. High vibration or positive thinking. That's very important. Um, I'm not going to tell you how to pray in, in this video or, or the, the processes, the different forms of meditation. But there's definitely a 
higher source, a creator, God, whatever word that you uh, tend to use. I, I use God a lot in our uh, discussions, in our Discord group. But there's a there's no question that life originated from a very powerful high vibration source. And we can, through prayer meditation, have a relationship or tap into that source. It takes practice and time, but you get better as you do it. Well, there's always for all of us a first time that we start, but continue that. Number eight, gratitude. Always be thankful. Try to have something that you're grateful for each day and compliment once per day. For sure you want to compliment family members. I think it's easy to take family members for granted and forget to compliment them and assume, well, they know I love them or they know I care about them and life wouldn't be the same without them. Well, it doesn't hurt to verbally voice that in a frequency in your voice of gratitude to family members. But even if you could do once a day besides family, once a day, compliment a stranger. Uh, I don't know, nowadays, if you can get away with saying that you like someone's outfit, it looks nice, the shirt or dress that they're wearing or, or their hair or for opening a door uh, or they did a, a nice job at work or whatever it might be. But being positive and complimenting per day and being grateful is extremely important. Important in the psychological, emotional aspect of our life. Point nine, be careful on choices of entertainment. Well, that's that's a large catch. So that would include, if you're to watch TV, remember, point five, I'd say get rid of TV, Netflix, all the, the uh, internet-based TV as well. But if you're watching TV, you would want to be careful of your choices of television, music, movies, video games, any type of electronic media on point five, that is going to subconsciously affect your thought and your mind behavior and your personal pattern development, believe it or not, your, your choice of entertainment. So really think carefully of your choices and perhaps you can mix it up. Try to uh, maybe stop certain forms of entertainment, see if you have any withdrawal symptoms or uh, make a complete 180. If, if you are used to watching uh, science fiction or violent movies, uh, try watching um, comedy, for example, or documentaries. Point 10, be slow to anger, quick to forgive, have a sense of humor. This, this is really uh, important for your internal organ functionality. Well, the ancient texts, uh, the scriptures mention that actually being slow to anger and quick to forgive has healing powers as far as your organs and even a healing to the bones. Well, those are simple layman's terms written in, in these ancient texts, but they have a lot of wisdom. Uh, holding on to anger and holding on to grudges, uh, not, not forgiving family, neighbors, uh, workmates, will actually do you more harm than them. It'll, it'll affect your immune system, your digestive system, um, the type of uh, hormones, that you'll be uh, producing in that state, if it's long-term, day after day, can be actually quite damaging. So having a sense of humor helps with your humility. Um, it, it helps just, well, when you have a sense of humor, it's a, you're taking life uh, not as seriously. You're able to let infractions roll off your back like uh, water on a duck's back. And uh, laughter also has great healing power. 
That's why a lot of people, you're just uh, comedies. Uh, if, if it's a comedian, you're at a comedy club or a, a comedic movie, or you're listening to a, an old uh, comedian on an LP back in the day, uh, you always feel better after a, a hour, two, three hours of, of hard laughter. So my disclaimer, as I mentioned, this is not medical advice. I'm not a doctor. I'm a research scientist. So um, it's very important to not profess to be a professional and give medical advice when you're not. You're open to liability and, and can be sued. So uh, this isn't medical advice. I'm not a doctor. You need to do your own research. I, I our, our medical system that we have in the Western world is allopathy medicine. Um, the Flexner Report is something very interesting. Maybe I can do a video of that. The Flexner Report in the early 1900s was a multi-year report sponsored by Carnegie and Rockefeller. And at the turn of the century, the end of the 1800s, beginning of the 1900s, we had multiple medical agencies and philosophies in the United States. And all but maybe four or five got shut down by the uh, central banks, the Carnegie, Rockefeller, du DuPonts, Vanderbilt type, the elite, and they channeled all their grants and their political um, pressuring to adopt allopathy medicine, which is pharmaceutical based, as our primary care. So allopathy medicine is great for trauma. In fact, I had a major accident in the mid-1990s. I would have uh, died right on the spot if it weren't for our medical community. So when you have trauma like that, in my case, uh, a work-related accident, a car accident, uh, or you have um, transplants, organ transplants type needed, uh, allopathy medicines, obviously the best. But they tend to poo-poo uh, ancient uh, oriental type medicine techniques, uh, tribal medicine techniques that have been around for thousands of years. So things such as foot ionics and colonics, uh, enemas, your uh, lemon enemas and other type of things, they, they might poo-poo that. But do your own research and see what these um, type of body cleansing techniques, which have been used for thousands of years, see what you think. And the juicing uh, is using all organic fruits and vegetables, like I mentioned up here, point one. And even the medical community has positive things to say about uh, fruits and vegetables and juicing, and the allopathy medicine, our medical community, also has much to say about reducing refined sugars. So they're not completely evil uh, or bad. I'm not saying that at all. But uh, your reducing of the sugars, which are in your beverages and a lot of food, this will all help. So I wanted to bring this about. It's not always doom and gloom. There are things that we can do for our mind and body to try to minimize the effects of our harmful and, and music and food. Because this isn't going away. This is, this is here to stay. Our music industry, our entertainment industry, television, Hollywood, uh, video gaming. I'm going to do another video on that. Uh, that that's huge. Our, our corporations, our restaurants, fast food, our processed food at the grocery stores, boy, that's not going anywhere. So um, what we have to do is develop a strategy knowing that this is never going to change, but what can we do to minimize this onslaught? And again, in my series, I don't think it's backdoor meetings where they're conspiring all the corporations and employees to damage the human consciousness and our physical health. But this is probably orchestrated way beyond the human level. There's definitely some type of intelligence out there that either can't stand our species or wants to completely dominate or hijack our conscious experience. It's those characters that are probably behind this. So the 1 through 10 is to combat the unseen influence out there that's working against us. Take care. Back in 2010, I awoke, and it scared the living daylights out of me. I started to see things that other people couldn't see. 
Until I pointed it out to them, they had no idea it was there. I studied hard for uh, over a year to find this out, what, why I could do this. And in April of 2012, I had a supernatural experience. And by October of 2012, I had another one. And that one confirmed the first one. And it confirmed it through a scripture in the Bible. It's pretty unusual for a, a guy that uh, had spent the last 20 years being a Buddhist. But there it was. And this information that I started to see gave me information about the United States of America. And I'd like to show you uh, some of that today. But I'd like to start out with a scripture. And this is it. The huge serpent was thrown down, that ancient snake named Devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world, was thrown down to earth and its angels were thrown down with it. And that's from Revelation 12, 19. And that is actually painted on the United States of America, very much so. And I'd like to show it to you today. We're actually looking at a very large serpent laying over the uh, United States looking for whoever it may devour right now. Can you see it yet? Let me take you in a little bit further. We'll go in to Idaho and Montana and have a look at it. So let's zoom in a little. And we'll put on some borders here. So you can see Idaho here and Montana here. Can you see the serpent's uh, face yet? It's right there in front of you. Let me show it to you. Here is the first eye of the serpent. There it is, putting it in. Let's go and zoom in on it. Take it out. Put it back in so you can see it's really there. Now the second eye. Of the serpent. Take it in, take it out, put it in, take it out. There it is. Zooming back out. Can you see it yet? Can you see the serpent that's looking over and draped over America? Let's do the outline of the serpent now. There it is. Look at that. Starts way up here in the Aleutian Islands, crosses uh, Alaska, down through Canada, and its head looks like it's there, right over Montana and Idaho. Let's zoom back in. We'll put some nostrils in there. There's one. There's the other. I'll show you that they're really there. There they go. Now this uh, snake has a bottom jaw. There it is. It's got something in its mouth as well. It looks like it's human flesh. Where's this uh, serpent looking? It looks like it's it looking in a particular direction. Can you see? Any idea where it's looking? Well, I asked uh, God in a prayer, I said, where is this serpent looking? And he showed me. Let's start right here at the top of this eye. Right here. We'll go down through this fleck in here, in the eye. We'll go right down through the middle of it. I did this before. I'll put the uh, the line in there. Okay, there's uh, a red line following on. I can get rid of the yellow line there now. So, same spot. Let's uh, take a look where that's looking. What's this question mark here? Where is this serpent looking? Well, what do you know, folks? It's Area 51 got a big question mark over it, what they're doing there. Plenty of uh, 
researchers have uh, been researching this area for, for many years and that they believe that there's uh, alien technology that's uh, been given to the black operations and, and American military. That's why they've been so far ahead of the rest of the world in their technology. But uh, they uh, think it's alien technology or aliens from far, far away. I don't believe that at all. In my view, uh, aliens are uh, demons in the Bible. What we think is alien technology is just from the next dimension. And they're uh, here wanting to take over. The demons of the Bible. You've known about it for 2,000 years or 3,000 years. And here it is. It really is there. Look, it's looking directly at it. But we can also say, well, maybe that's just seeing shapes. Maybe we're seeing shapes in the clouds. Well, if we uh, ask our Lord and Saviour again and say, hey, Jesus, am I really seeing this? Let's put the borders back in there and some names back in there. Because the truth is in the eyes, isn't it? The truth is always in the eyes. And so we'll go back here and have a look. We found out through the eyes where it was looking. At Area 51. Oh, look at that. Anaconda. It's the largest serpent in the world. Am we, are we really looking at a snake? When the truth is in the eyes. It's even labelled anaconda. That's the largest snake in the world. Isn't it? That's an anaconda. Surely is the largest snake in the world. Other than the one that we've just looked at. There it is. It is labelled. Can you see that the, uh, the snake, the serpent, this large serpent that's been thrown down to earth, has been unmasked right now. It's taking off its mask. It doesn't care if you know anymore about it. The serpent, Satan, believes he's got it won. But he hasn't. We know the truth. But we can see the mask coming off as well. We'll just put the mask in there now for you. Hey, see it there? I'll take it back out to make sure that you know it's there. Can you see it? The mask is coming off the serpent. People believe in the United States now that just because they go to church, they're going to the right church. But these are churches that have been infiltrated by Satan. They're not telling the truth. They're not following the scriptures. If you're following uh, these sort of mega churches, the feel-good churches, that don't really give you the message, there's more entertainment than message. If you're going to those, then you're probably not going to get the message that's going to get you through to heaven. This serpent behind the mask of these uh, mega churches, they speak nicely. And it sounds like they're speaking of the cross through this mouth. But look at this. It's a cross. They're speaking words of the cross. And I'll show you that that cross is there underneath it. There it is. It's really there. These churches are speaking words like they're speaking the words of the cross, speaking the words from the scriptures. But they're not. They've been infiltrated. Find yourself a, a church of Philadelphia to learn the truth. There's no salvation in these churches. You need to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. We win. The Bible says, For whoever calls in the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I ask you now to follow me in a prayer. To receive Jesus Christ. I confess, Lord, that I'm a sinner. And I believe in you, Jesus Christ, that you died on the cross for me washed away all my sins and that you raised again after three days I accept you as my personal saviour 
Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Folks, this is real. Come to Jesus Christ right now.